everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Jamie Lee, and I am the Mixed Media Artist. Here on my channel, I do time-lapse art videos, and I also do videos on things I find interesting in the art world, such as art Mandela effects, art conspiracy theories, art theft, and paranormal art. If that sounds like something you're interested in, please hit the subscribe button, and let's get right into today's video. For today's video, I am going to be making a mixed media painting. In today's video, I thought I'd take you through the process that I do to create mixed media art, starting with the mixed media background and then going on to the portrait that I am doing on the background. And a few things before we get going. Some of the video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about what I'm doing or what I'm using, and then I will go into time lapse to music through the parts that you can just watch. If you'd like to follow along and do a piece of art of your own, that is awesome and you're more than welcome to do that. I'm going to be showing you the products that I am using for this particular artwork. By no means do you have to have the products I have. You do not have to have all of the items that I have. You can do it with whatever you've got. Um, don't feel like you have to use what I'm using. I have a bunch of supplies out and I may or may not use all of them. I like to have supplies on hand and then I can pick and choose what I'm gonna use depending on how stuff is looking. I will go ahead and show you the supplies that I am using and then we'll get into doing the time-lapse part of it. If you've seen any of my videos before, you might notice we're not in my usual background. I'm actually in my kitchen because it has a good countertop for me to be doing this with the filming and everything. And in case you're wondering, yes, I do have an art print in my kitchen that has some mostly naked ladies on it. <laughs> anyway, all right, so let's get into the artwork and I hope you enjoy. If you're not doing it along with me, that's totally cool too. If you just wanna watch and see what happens, then welcome and I hope you enjoy it. All right, let's get started. So this is my canvas. I've already got it started. I've drawn my image onto it. This is just a canvas board, canvas panel 9 by 12. I just drew my reference and to draw her on here I just used a mechanical pencil. I also used a gum eraser to get rid of any marks. Before I start doing any sort of mixed media or anything, I use this. It is Krylon workable fixative and I like using the workable fixative because it doesn't set the whole thing it just protects it so that if you're working over it it doesn't pull up all your pencil marks so you can see what you're doing I always spray my pencil drawing with this before I start doing any painting or background I'm gonna go ahead and show you the supplies that I will be using for doing the background I just have a regular brush it's a fairly good size this isn't a huge painting so I've got you know a big enough brush that I can do stuff but not so big that it's gonna mess everything up I have some pieces of scrapbook paper those are gonna go down on my background and to glue those down I like to use Mod Podge because when you take paper and you glue it down on the canvas using Mod Podge and then kind of flatten it out I like to use an old gift card or credit card something that you can smooth it out with then as it dries it kind of plasters your paper to the background so that it doesn't have any wrinkles which is awesome I have some acrylic paint for the background I intend for this to be a darker colored background so I've got some dark blues and a purple then I also am going to be using a bunch of mixed media stuff on the background and for her I'm going to use oil paint I've been doing this for probably three to four years now and I've always struggled with trying to figure out okay I've got my mixed media background and I've got my portrait now how do I keep my portrait which I do in oils which as you might know oils take a little bit longer to dry I use water mixable oil so it's not quite as long but if I do the oil portrait first I have to wait forever for the whole thing to dry before I do my background and then if I use glitter which I always do it sticks to the oil paint no matter if it's dry or wet. So then, okay, well what if I do it the opposite way? Well, then I'm trying to do my background and then I've got to do my oil painting in it and it's got stuff stuck to it. So, believe it or not, it took me forever to figure this out. But now, I start using liquid frisket. It says for all your masking needs. So basically what this stuff is, is genius. It is 
a liquid that you like paint on using a paintbrush. So what I'm going to do the first thing before I do anything else, I will take this and I will paint her with the frisket and then let it dry. And what that does is it dries and it forms a barrier. And so even if I have like ink that gets over here, if I spill glitter, um, it's not going to get on her portrait. And then when everything's dry, I pull the frisket up because it becomes almost like, um, almost like dry glue but gummier. So you can literally just peel it up and then underneath, there she is, all ready to go and be painted. So this stuff is awesome. And that's what I'm going to use first to start everything off with. On my background, I'm going to be using ink. I have several different kinds of ink spray and then the dropper. I have different colors going with my theme that I was talking about of blues and purples. I have a little bit of, this says it's chip sapphire. I don't know what color that is because it's new, but it sounds awesome. I have some white, Bombay white ink and some more blues and stuff like that. So like I said, you don't have to have everything that I have. I just happen to have a lot of supplies and I pulled them out to use for this and we'll see where where it goes and what happens. Also for the background I have beads. I have this thing of beads. I have a little gold thing of beads. Um, some black ones. And then I also have some charms. They are in this little bag here. And I've got some like gears, clocks, spiders keys, a skull, and if, um, again, this is something I found out recently, I have been buying charms and stuff like that at, like, art craft supply stores for years now, and Hobby Lobby, Michaels, you go in and you basically have what is in stock, and they're little tiny, you know, you might only get three or four charms at a time, and it's kind of expensive so I always have to go in and see hey is any of this like buy one get one half off or on sale the other day I was thinking you know I do need some more skulls I like using skulls and that's the other thing like stuff that I like to use they don't often have in stock because I like weird shit so um I like skulls I like spiders I like the skeleton hand like I like cool kind of offbeat stuff so not like the typical cutesy things, that's not really my style. I thought, hey, I wonder if they sell this kind of stuff on Amazon or eBay or online. Holy smokes, you guys. Amazon, you go and type in whatever you're looking for as charms, boom, a ton of stuff comes up. I ordered it two days ago and it's in my hand right now. I was so incredibly happy to find this. So if you're looking for stuff like this and um, not only is it available and it's the stuff you want because you can literally type in like if you want trees or you want dolphins or you know anything like that they'll come up with all kinds of packs and they're relatively cheap compared to what you have to spend at the hobby store so I've got those here's from my other supplies I've got some dark colored beads I've got a blue jay feather um, some little necklace chain um, just some other stuff that I thought would go with the theme because I'm doing blues so I picked some silver and black and then to finish off my backgrounds, I always use glitter and glitter type things. So I've got some glitter, I've got some big jewel type glitter, um, I've got some little type of beads that I'm planning to use because they're the right colors. I have a little thing of blue glitter, some stuff like this. These are all things that you can find online or at the hobby store. If you don't have all these colors, that's totally okay. You don't need to have all those colors. I just, I'm kind of glitter crazy. I've got these kinds of glitter. That is pretty much all the supplies that I'm going to be using. Like I said, I'm going to start by putting on that masking. And so I'm going to time lapse that so you can see putting on that frisket. So I tried to put it on as thick as I could, then um, it's easier to peel off. If it's really thin, then it just kind of is harder to peel off. Brisket is on, and I'm going to let that dry, and then we'll be back to start the background. The first thing I'm going to do is take my 
collage scrapbook papers and glue them down to the background. Now I've taken my scrapbook papers and I've kind of torn them up and laid them out where I think I want them to go. And now I'm going to be gluing them down with my Mod Podge and I have my little gift card to smooth out the Mod Podge. Otherwise it will get ridged and it makes it a little harder to work over so I like to make it smooth plus it takes out any bubbles or wrinkles that you might have um, like I said Mod Podge does pull out a lot of wrinkles as it dries but just so that you're as smooth as can be to start off with and not, don't really have to mess with it I'm pretty much going to use the same brush for most of the background because it's a pretty good size and I'm just working with the paint the acrylic paint, the Mod Podge, I don't really need to change brushes. So to put down my papers, I just take the Mod Podge and I do a pretty good layer pretty much everywhere that I can think of because I know that I want all the edges to stick down so you pretty much need to have the Mod Podge on pretty good. So I always put a layer of Mod Podge under. That's what I'm going to stick my papers to. And I will also put a layer over. And I do try to overlap a lot of times because I don't want it to look like it's just one paper stuck after another. I want it to look like they're all kind of mixed together. So that's why I do it that way. And then I just do more Mod Podge over the paper that I've laid down and see how it has like a texture to it. So I'm going to lay this, this one down here. Here's where I take my card and I just smooth the Mod Podge over and you're going to get some left which is why I have this paper towel. I just wipe the excess off. And I go over it until I've cut it as smooth as I can get it. You're still going to have a little bit of texture but at least that makes it so there's not some strange lines or wrinkles or that kind of thing because that can kind of look messy. Alright, so there's one part. all the scrapbook paper I'm going to use. The only other thing I'm going to do is put this doily that I showed you on. And then if you're not sure where stuff will look good, just place it where you think it might look good. Try it out in a few places. Stuff I can tear to any shape that I want so it kind of helped me to balance out. Like if I had just one piece it might be too much but if I've got the two it kind of helps balance it a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that down too. These also work really well with Mod Podge. Um, it's just I do have to work with it a little bit because it doesn't want to stick down as good. The edges like to pull up, but once it dries, that's not really an issue. It's just to get it started. I just like to use a little bit more glue there, and then I'm going to do that one. There's that. And then I also have this purple tool, and I think I'd like to put that on here and one or more spots so I'm actually going to cut it and just kind of like a really random shape. I don't really want any sharp edges on the piece that I use. And if you can see there's like a bubble here with that and I don't think it's going to be a big deal because as it dries it's going to pull it down to the canvas so that will go away. I'm just going to let this dry before I go on to the next layer and if you want to speed up the dry time you can use a hair dryer and just dry it. Um, the Mod Podge especially will dry fairly quickly with a hair dryer so if you don't want to wait grab a hair dryer 
it will just take a couple minutes to dry instead of longer and you'll be sure that the under like sometimes the surface of the Mod Podge dries but the underneath is still squishy so the hair dryer with the heat helps to make sure that all of it has dried For the most part, everything here is dry using the hair dryer. This little bit right here, I'm not going to worry about because I'm not working with that yet. Uh, one product that I did forget to mention that I use on my mixed media backgrounds are these Caran d'Ache Neo Color Water Soluble Crayons. Basically, you can find the same type of product. It's by Winsor Newton, and I think they have them at most craft supply stores. I ordered this because this is a Swiss brand, and um, they don't offer them in any stores around here, so I got them off the internet. They are, I mean, they look just like crayons. What's cool about them, though, is that they're crayons that turn into watercolors. So what I do with them, I'm going to pick out some colors that match what I was wanting to use. So black, dark blue, that's Prussian blue. I did violet. I think I'm also going to do lilac. And I think that's it. This blue is like a bright blue. I don't know if I want to use that one. So... With these, it is so easy. All I do is I take them and whatever part of the painting that I want to put them on, I literally just scribble. You can be very loose. Um, you don't really have to worry about being precise or anything like that. Just scribble wherever you want that color to be at. I'm gonna do black up here and black right there, kind of down the side. We are going to do something else to this so it's not going to stay scribbles, although um, it is kind of a nice effect if you leave some scribbles. It's kind of fun. That's totally up to your preference. I think, I think the violet is darker, so I'm going to do the darker color up here. Like that. And a little bit, kind of here and there. And then I'm going to take this other purple it's a little bit lighter or brighter and I'm just gonna do down near the bottom and scribble that there and that is pretty much all I'm gonna use of those so then the fun part is you take your paintbrush that you've been using so I've got this one and I've got my glass of water and just dip your paintbrush in the water and go over the crayons. Any water soluble crayon will do this and you just wet it and it will flow and I usually just kind of I don't mess with it too much I just let it go mix how it wants to. Like I said for some parts you can leave a little bit of the scribble in if you want or you can turn it completely watercolor and see how where I have that frisket I can go over that but it's not going to be on my drawing because that layer is there to prevent it from going onto her face or her hair. So I just go through the whole thing and turn it all into watercolor. But it's not a like a transparent watercolor like actual watercolors. It's definitely more opaque which um, I like because it covers a lot of the whiteness of the canvas showing through. The Caran d'Ache crayons have mostly dried. Um, as you can see, now it looks like the background is kind of like a wash of blues and purples, which is what I wanted. The next thing I do is I put down my beads and my charms and the other stuff that I'm going to put on the background and I forgot to mention I use this right here. It is the Liquitex Gloss Super Heavy Gel or I also use the Matte Super Heavy Gel. I guess it doesn't really matter for what I'm doing with it because you don't ever really see the gel so it's pretty much hidden. But it has to be the super heavy, even just the regular heavy. They have like matte heavy and gloss heavy, but it's just not strong enough to hold down some of the stuff I put on. And I found that this is so strong, like I can stick almost anything to a canvas and it will stay. 
I have literally uh, dropped a canvas on the ground before and nothing moved. Like it is almost like cement once it's dry. So I also use a palette knife for this. I find that it works really good to scoop it out and lay it where I want it. And so that's what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to use the palette knife to put out the gel. And you can put this wherever you want. You can put it in a big area. You can make little tiny areas. Like it's really up to your ideas of what you want your art to look like. I usually just kind of wing it. Might have noticed that I put down a towel and then some paper under my artwork because the ink part and the glitter part can be a little bit of a nightmare. <laughs> it goes everywhere depending on how you do it. So I just like to make sure I have something, catch anything that might run off or the glitter that might go all over the place. So I just sprinkle some random bits of glitters over the gel and it will end up sticking. Some of it will fall off, um, but I make sure that I put enough down so that it covers and then later on I shake it so that the pieces that come off are going to come off and the ones that stick are going to stay and I usually save the ones that come off. I'm not wasting any glitters and I use it in another project. This now has the heavy gel and then it has the arms and the beads and other stuff like that and then it has glitter all throughout. The glitter ends up sticking to the heavy gel and the heavy gel dries completely clear so you won't see it when it's completed and I always try to make sure I get glitter kind of like in the sides so that there's not any bare spot. You can either you know just kind of shake it so that it gets those places or if you can't get it there you can take a brush and just kind of brush the glitter up against it so that it sticks to the gel while it's still wet. So then that's one side and now I'm going to do a little bit up at the top and then down this side. The same exact thing I did for the other side. I'm going to do the heavy gel where I want it to go, put my items on, and then do the glitter. like when it is covered in glitter. I would not recommend doing a blow dryer to dry the heavy gel medium because you will blow your glitter all over the place. 
So at this point it's best to just let the painting sit and the heavy gel medium to dry, uh, super heavy gel actually. Once it's dry I would brush off all of the glitter um, and then save it. I have a container where I save glitter that I've used already to use in other paintings. I'll be back in a second but it's going to take a little while to dry in real time and then we'll brush off the glitter and we'll go ahead with the inks and do any stencils or stamping after the ink dries. So you see how the extra glitter has been brushed away. Um, there's still going to be more that comes off, but this is good enough for now. And also you can see how the glitter stuck to the mask over the drawing. But that's okay because when this is peeled off, the glitter will come with it and won't stick to her face and her hair and her body. So the mask is working exactly like I wanted it to and it's going to be completely clean underneath when I pull that off. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my inks. Obviously there's not like a lot of area where the inks are going to go, but I'm going to put a little bit of the colors and then what I do is I take a spray bottle with water in it and I usually spray the inks so that it runs a little bit more and it creates some really cool patterns. This is also another thing where it's just basically you do however you want to do it. Just drop it wherever you feel like. So those are my pour or dropper inks and then I also have several spray inks. I've got black, the gray, this blue, a purple, a dark blue. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of spray and if you're using spray ink it can get a little messy. Usually do is I like to get a piece of paper and then you can put that to block. Like I don't want it to spray anywhere so I'll just block it with the paper and that way the overspray ends up on the paper and not the counter or anything else. And so for that I just literally give a few sprays in some different directions. And again, it doesn't matter if it gets on her because the mask is there, so it's going to block it from getting on her. Otherwise, it'd be hard to paint over that. You'd have to worry about making sure you're painting over the whole thing. I'm going to spray with my water and kind of get the inks to mix a little bit so the colors will kind of bleed into each other. Okay, so you can see that all of my inks have blended together and I have to let this layer dry before I can go on to the next one. That's one thing about doing mixed media art, especially if you're doing lots of layers and lots of different materials, you have to allow a lot of time for stuff to dry in between. I've let my mixed media background dry. It's been a couple days and I've just let it sit and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. So I'm going to go ahead and start on painting her and I've got all of my stuff that I'm going to use set out here. I've got water and turpentine. I am using oil paints, but I use water mixable oil paint. I get the Duo Aqua Oil brand from Holbein, but you can also find uh, Winsor Newton at Hobby Lobby or craft stores, and it does the same thing. Basically, you can mix this with water instead of a solvent if you don't like using stuff like turpentine. It's a little bit easier to work with and dries faster than traditional oils. I have a disposable palette where um, this side is waxy and you just can, once you've used up a page, you can just tear it off and throw it away. I've got all my oil paints up here and I've got my paint brushes over here. 
You can probably tell that most of the brushes I have set out are fairly small. She's not that big, um, as you can tell compared to the size of my hand. So I'm not going to be using really big brushes. I'm going to use smaller brushes. And I've got some colors laid out here that I think I'll be using. I kind of want her to go a little bit with the background. And my idea for painting her is moon. And so she's going to be very light colored. Her hair is white. Her face is very light colored. Her shirt will be dark. And I've got black and burnt sienna. Black will be for her shirt and some of the darker parts of her face. Like her eyelashes and her pupil. Pupils are always black. Nostril holes are always black. The line where her lips touch is usually either black or a very dark color. I've got burnt sienna. I'm going to do this for her skin but very lightly because again her skin is going to be very light colored. I have Prussian blue for her eyes. Joan. Oh, oh god, sorry, sorry. Hey, Joan Cusack. I think that's how you say it. Brilliant is a really good flesh tone. Pyrrole red. Cobalt blue. I have white, titanium white, not zinc white. I have dioxazine purple. And then I have lemon yellow and cerulean blue. So those are the colors that I think I'm going to be using. And I'm going to mix them here on this. And the first thing I have to do before I can do any of that, obviously you can see I still have my masking fluid on here. That's been keeping the glitter and the ink off her. So now it's time to remove that and it's super easy. Literally all you do is just take your finger and kind of roll it and it'll stick to itself. And you can just start peeling it off to show the drawing that's underneath. That's also why I use the workable fixative after I did the line drawing because then the lines don't get pulled up as well. They're protected. This is how I get back my pencil drawing which is insanely satisfying, honestly. So all of that masking has just come right off and then there is the drawing underneath and it's nice and white on the canvas and I mean I do have a couple pieces of glitter but you can just brush those away very easily because they have nothing to stick to there and then she is ready to paint.